When you read news stories about population aging, they almost always tend to be very scary. We are going to have many, many older people. They are going to bankrupt the country because of their pensions. But even worse, their medical care costs are going to skyrocket. They're going to be more disabled people. They're going to be more people who, being close to the ends of their life, are not thinking about the environment. They're not forward thinking. They tend to be more conservative. And so the fear is that as this big wave of older people grows and there's fewer and fewer younger people to support them, the burden of supporting the young, supporting the old people becomes intolerable on the young and eventually the system commences. The problem that we have is that 65 is not a good fixed age for all places and all countries, all times and all subgroups of populations. Someone who was age 60, 150, 200 years ago was a very old person. Today it's a person of middle age. So what is the difference? The difference is in the remaining life expectancy and in overall life expectancy. So that's why we thought now we have really to link it to, 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 to something which, which, which is ahead, which lies ahead of people, how, lo how many years they're supposed to live. Because many decisions that people make in their lives, they depend roughly upon the estimate of how much they still have uh, to go. Like 100 years ago, very few people would go to universities, or almost no one at age, say, 50. Today, it happens all the time. People at age 70 would never buy houses 100 years ago. Today, it also happens very often. As life expectancy increases, we see more and more people at age 80 getting hip transplants. They only get hip transplants because the doctors believe they have many, many years of active life ahead of them. If the doctors believed that they were soon going to die, they wouldn't give them hip transplants at age 80. So we think the last, say, 50, 60 years, people are really feeling like they are 10 years younger because their characteristics are different. They change. Their health is different. They live longer. They are in better in the cognitive sense. So there are many, many characteristics on which people are performing much better. The record track and field, the oldest track and field athlete who competed in a sanctioned program was a few weeks before his 105th birthday. And if he competes again, and he's a quite robust man, there is going to be a new set of records for those who are 105 to 109. And the way we know that this is important is that it does not surprise us. So one, one of the papers that we published uh, was based on health and retirement service uh, in the United States. Uh, that's where we actually compared uh, the hand grip strengths of people with different education categories. Uh, this is a dynamometer which is usually used for hand grip strengths. It's a very strong protocol, a very strict protocol how this is measured. But uh, what we figured out that people with high education in the United States at age 65 perform the same in terms of hand grip strengths as people at age 60 uh, with lower level of education. So it means that in the dimension of physical strengths, these people basically are the same. I'm not saying that they are five years younger, but they perform as, as people with other category who are five years younger. It used to be thought before, or many people thought before we began our research, that less educated people doing more manual work would have stronger hand grip strengths than more educated people who sit at the desk more. Turned out that that was wrong. More educated people both lived longer and had greater, stronger hand grip strength. The key thing that you have to remember is that every generation is living longer 
we have to think about how we're going to deal with it in a serious way. Are we going to deal with it with people having two careers, having perhaps a more difficult physical career up to age 50, then having another career? Are we going to reconceptualize how we think about education? Are we going to say that it is silly to educate people up to their 20s and then stop? Should we say we're going to have two periods of education from their 20s and then another one in their 60s, perhaps? So if we adjust this age with taking into account increasing life expectancy, then actually what happens is that most of the population in the developed world are becoming younger. For the last two centuries, population of United Kingdom becoming younger, Sweden becoming younger, Japan in the last, say, 60 years of data that we have, becoming younger. But some countries have now demographically indexed pension ages. One such country is Sweden, another such country is Poland. But the advantage of this system is that you don't have a pension crisis. You don't have one year in which all of a sudden you're running out of money because the amount that you're paying is now changing every year, depending on how long people live. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, during our presentation, there were questions like, okay, you suggest uh, to go for higher age of retirement. Now, where is this limit? I mean, if we live longer, at some point we have to retire later. But there were some questions like, okay, how can people at age 70, if they retire at age 70, carry heavy things, do heavy work, because physically still they are, they are not so strong. But the issue is that if we are talking about 100 years of life expectancy, then we should also think that technology is changing tremendously. It's not that only life expectancy is changing. The whole world is changing, technology is changing, and at some point people are not going to do hard work. Hard work will be done for them by machines, by robots, or something like that. So they, but they have to be re-educated to deal with those new techno technologies. If you ask what 80-year-olds are going to joke about in the future with their grandchildren, they are going to say, I remember a time when I actually had to touch my computer. Ha, 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 ha. And their grandchildren will look at them like, boy, these are real dinosaurs, my grandparents. They actually had to touch their computers. Old people in the future are going to be much better educated, much more computer savvy than today's old people. And what we are doing, we are providing a new basis for this reconceptualization of the life cycle. And it's very important that people begin to recognize that they're going to live a long period of time and plan for it, for them and for their children.